These are Eurocent coins. They're also basically worthless, copper-coated, radioactive steel discs. Yeah, I said radioactive, but perhaps I should elaborate. And I'm not talking about just background levels of radiation either. But don't worry, they're not radioactive enough to give you a tumour, just barely over natural levels. First, we need to begin with a basic understanding of how steel is produced. We begin with iron ore, mined from the earth and separated from the rock it's found in using magnets. In a blast furnace, the iron ore is combined with coke, a highly purified form of carbon. For our purposes, what is important to know is that inside the blast furnace, a stream of superheated air, or enriched oxygen, is, well, blasted into the bottom of the furnace, combusting the coke and smelting the iron into the iron carbon alloy we know as steel. This was all very well and good, until the 16th of July 1945, when... The Manhattan Project's Trinity explosion was the first of over 2,000 nuclear explosions detonated by us humans. Each of these explosions caused background radiation levels around the world to increase. Background radiation levels peaked at 0.11 millisieverts above natural levels in 1963, the year that the Partial Nuclear Test Ban Treaty was enacted. Levels have since dropped to 0.005 millisieverts per year above natural levels. But still, a consequence of these explosions is that present day air is contaminated with trace amounts of radionucleotides, such as cobalt-60 which are introduced into steel in the blast of superheated air in the blast furnace, and further perpetuated through the recycling of old steel into new, resulting in modern steel having a weak radioactive signature. This isn't particularly important for the currency in your pocket. Even the peak 1963 levels are not terribly much, since natural background radiation weighs in at 2.4 millisieverts per year. However, for some uses, such as Geiger counters, and some medical equipment that detect radiation, this very much does matter. And so today, there is a market for low background steel that is known to have been produced prior to the first atomic detonations, and therefore free from radioactive contamination. So where can you find yourself some of this old, and valuable, low background steel? Well you might need to dust off your diving gear, as the usual source has been sunken World War I battleships, safely protected from radioactive contamination by many metres of ocean water.